we were discussing about we 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 discussed the necessary and sufficient conditions for optimality in the previous class and in this class i want to introduce what is known as gradient methods and even though there are non gradient methods as well which we will study in subsequent lectures uh, gradient methods form one of the most important class of algorithms for solving a non linear optimization problem so so let's see what the intuition of gradient method is okay so you want so define x alpha as x plus alpha d uh, and f is a vector from uh, f is a function from r n to r and you have alpha greater than 0 it's called step size and you have d in r n it's called the descent direction remember that a standard optimization problem is always posed as a minimization problem so we want to minimize x in r n of f of x okay so d is the descent direction why is it called descent because you are trying to move towards a function that has a, a point that has a lower value than where you are at this point of time okay so the goal is pick alpha d such that such that f of x alpha is less than f of x so x is a point where you start you want to descend and take a step size in such a manner that the final value is strictly less than the initial value you started from okay so let's let's do the first order taylor approximation and see what f of x alpha looks like so my f of x can you see the board okay so f of x alpha is approximately not approximately let me write it equal to f of x plus what's the second term right the third term is small o of alpha okay So my question to you is what should i take the value of d to be so that f of x alpha is strictly less than f of x so suggestion okay suggestion for possible d okay remember what the goal is and we want to find a d such that we sort of uh, achieve the goal any thoughts guesses sorry negative of gradient okay this is option number 1 any other option okay so what's your name okay this okay not a pick d such that gradient of fx transpose d is strictly negative right that's what you you claim okay and certainly this choice of d would satisfy this condition right so what do i have and, and and z is right okay this is what we want we want a d so that the gradient of fx transpose d is strictly less than 0 so that this term is strictly negative right alpha is a positive quantity 
So this term is strictly negative and this term is ignorable, right? Because it's small O of alpha, it's very, very small for small values of alpha. So O alpha is negligibly small for small values of alpha. So this is this is something that we will keep in mind for pretty much the entire course. Okay, we always want to take a small step size because we know that this term will be negligibly small and this term will dominate O of alpha. So whatever is the uh, the performance of this particular term or what the sign of this particular term would dictate how bigger or smaller f of x alpha is with respect to f of x. Okay, so so this one works for sure, because if d is equal to negative of gradient, then gradient of fx transpose negative of gradient is what is square, right? So this is a small, I mean, this is strictly positive as long as the gradient of fx is not equal to 0. What is the other choice that you can have? Okay, what is the other choice that you can have for D? So the idea is you can take D to be equals to minus D gradient of Fx where D is a positive definite matrix. Okay, then also this condition would hold true. And in fact, in this case, you're taking D to be an identity matrix. Okay. So that's the idea, that's the intuition behind using gradient method where the descent direction D is some positive definite matrix multiplied by the gradient, that's why it's called the gradient method with a negative sign. Okay, and then you have to pick alpha, which is small in some sense. Okay, so what's our algorithm? The algorithm is start at x naught in Rn. Okay, so I'm starting at some arbitrary initial point, and then I'm going to pick dk for k greater than equal to 1 or k greater than equal to 0 dk as dk equals minus gradient minus some positive definite matrix dk multiplied by the gradient of f at xk and then pick alpha k small okay we will define what small means and then you go through the iteration xk plus 1 equals xk plus alpha k dk. There is a negative sign here. So let me introduce some some uh, variants of that algorithm. So steepest descent, my dk equals minus gradient of fxk. In other words, my capital dk is always an identity matrix. So it's called steepest descent.
So what's the property of steepest descent? So let me define G of xk as an approximation, first order Taylor approximation of f at xk. So that is equal to f of xk plus, sorry, G of x, x minus xk. Okay, so what are you doing? You have this original function like this, and at some point xk in the iteration, you are trying to come up with a linear approximation of that function, a locally a linear approximation of that function. And what the steepest descent is trying to do is minimize this function. Okay, so steepest descent. minimizes g of x. Okay, and that's why your dk is minus gradient of f of xk. So in particular, g of xk plus d is equal to f of xk minus gradient of fxk square. Okay, is there any questions on this? So gx is a linear approximation of f yeah. around xk in a neighborhood of xk. Okay. Oh, has a neighborhood. Right, in a neighborhood. Okay. I, I mean, you can define it more generally over the entire space, but it doesn't help because the function will change as you move out of an immediate neighborhood of xk. Okay, okay. so gx, you can define gx in the neighborhood of xk as this. And what you are doing is minimizing a first order approximation of the function around xk. But remember, you also have this term alpha k, right, which controls how much distance you want to go along that direction, right? So we will discuss about alpha k in a bit. Okay, I want to decide, I want to discuss the descent direction first. The second one is Newton's method. Where dk or capital dk is the second derivative of fxk inverse, right? And my dk is minus dk gradient of fxk. This is the famous Newton's method, which maybe you have heard of before. How many of you have heard of Newton, Newton's method earlier? Okay, quite a few. So what are you doing in Newton's method? So you define, so here is the idea. Well, if you want to minimize the first order approximation of the function, a second order approximation of the function is going to be much better than the first order approximation, right? So if you want to come up with a descent direction for an approximation of the original function, you might as well go for the second order approximation of the function, right? So that's what we will do here. So I'm going to define gx as the second order approximation 
of the function around x k. So, And if you try to solve this problem, minimize x in Rn g of x, you will find, remember this is a, well I'm going to assume that the second derivative is, is strictly positive definite. Okay, I'm going to make that assumption because I'm taking an inverse. So I want to make that assumption that the second derivative is strictly positive definite. And if you solve this problem, it's a convex problem, and the solution turns out to be x minus xk is equal to minus And the picture you should have in mind is that you have this function here and you're doing a, and this is your xk, and you're doing a second order approximation of the function around xk, and then you are trying to find a direction along which the second order approximation is minimized. Okay, so what's the problem here? What do you see, what do you think is the difference between the steepest descent and the Newton's method uh, in terms of computational cost or computational complexity? We need to calculate the inverse of hashing. Right, so you have to find the inverse. So first of all, you have to compute the second derivative of the function, which is something you don't have to do here. Here you only have to calculate the first derivative of the function. Here you have to calculate the first derivative, yes, fine. But you also have to calculate the second derivative of the function and then you have to inverse that function, is inverse that matrix. So it's a lot of computational overhead. But the good thing is this one is slow to converge, this one is very fast. Okay. So if your xk is small, hundred dimensional vector, you're fine. If your xk is thousand dimensional, uh, I don't know. Depends on how easily you can get this uh, second derivative and inverse of it. But if your xk is one million dimensional, then you are in big, big trouble here in Newton's method. On the other hand, you are much better off sticking with the steepest descent if you have that kind of a vector, right, where xk is very high dimensional. So that's why uh, not many people nowadays use Newton's method, especially in machine learning tasks, because your x could be very high dimensional. Okay? So it doesn't make sense to use uh, Newton's method, even though we know in theory Newton's method converges much faster than the steepest descent. Okay, fine. You know, it's difficult, computationally challenging. So let's uh, do something a little bit more sophisticated than this, but less sophisticated than Newton's method. A any question on Newton's method? X of k. So x of k is the estimate of the optimal point at step k of the iteration. Remember, your you started from x naught. Right, and you iterated x k plus one equals x k plus alpha k d k. Right, so so at first step it will be x naught, at second step it will be x one, at third step it will be x two, and so on. Any other question?
okay so we want to be more intelligent than steepest descent but less intelligent than newton's method so what's what would be a good option what would be a good trade off no ideas so it's called diagonally scale steepest descent and the idea is you take dk to be a diagonal matrix where d i k is is the second partial derivative of f with respect to xi evaluated at xk inverse okay so this is one option but you can also choose dik in some other fashion Okay, so you can pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not very intelligent, but you can pick it. Okay, in theory, and it would still descend because it's a positive definite matrix. Uh, and in my direction is negative d k gradient of f x k, and I'm going to assume that this is positive. there will be a way to handle negative values of this but for now on, for 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 the time being let's assume that all of these are positive quantities because we want dk to be a positive definite matrix so with this with this approach you don't have to calculate all second partial derivatives you only have to calculate second derivatives with respect to x i right so you have reduced the complexity substantially and then inverting a diagonal matrix is a very trivial task right you just invert the diagonal elements so that's why this is better than newton's uh, not better but this is computationally easier than newton's method but it tries to imitate some of the properties of newton's method okay then there is modified newton where dk is second derivative evaluated at initial vector x not inverse and then there is discretized Newton, where d k is so what is the idea here in modified newton
as you move along the iteration, right? So the the intuition behind it is if the second derivative doesn't change much, you can use modified Newton. So that's almost quadratic, right? Right? What's a quadratic function? X transpose qx plus b transpose x, right? What's the second derivative? It's q, right? So second derivative is q. It doesn't change with x. So if your function was almost quadratic, okay, it might have some third order, fourth order, fifth order polynomial, but it's almost quadratic. The coefficients are small for higher order terms. You can use modified Newton, so you don't have to calculate the second derivative inverse at every point of time in the iteration. You computed it once at the initial time step and then you just used it for all other time steps, right? So you have to do this computation only once. In the discretized Newton, the idea is that, well, I don't want to compute the second derivative exactly, but what, what I can do is come up with an approximation to the second derivative at xk, okay? How do we get this approximation? We'll get to that in one of the classes in the future, okay? But the key idea is I can't compute it exactly, so let's compute an approximation and take dk to be the inverse of that approximate second derivative. Okay, so those are the uh, four basic methods that, uh, that come under the umbrella of gradient methods. Okay, any questions about this? So let's try to come up with a geometric picture of what exactly these methods are trying to do. Okay, so let's say your cost was linear. Okay, and you want to minimize C transpose X. Of course, the minimization would be infinite, minus infinity, because you can go descend along some direction uh, and then you can uh, go all the way to minus infinity. But let's, to start with, to give you an intuition, what's the constant line? So constant cost curves, so ISO cost curves. So that will be like this. So this will be C transpose X equal to one, C transpose X equal to two, C transpose X equal to three, right? So the ISO cost curve are going to look like hyperplanes in this higher dimensional space. Can all of you visualize it, right? So, so this is this is the set of all points. So this is my Rn. This is my Rn. This is the set of all points for which C transpose X is equal to one. This is the set of all points for which C transpose X is equal to two. And this is the set of all points for which C transpose X is equal to three. What's the gradient of C transpose X? What is gradient of C transpose X? C, right? And what does C represent in this particular uh, figure? C would be the outward normal of the surface, right? Pointing in the direction uh, of increasing cost. Okay, so this is my cost. This is the increasing direction of cost. So this is my vector C. Okay, outward normal. So let's apply the same. So if you go in the negative, negative direction of C, so negative direction of the gradient, you are essentially minimizing the cost, right? Now let's look at a general nonlinear function that might look like this. This is my f of x equal to 5. This is my f of x equal to 4. f of x equal to 2 and this is my optimal point x, x, x star. So this is the point at which minimum of the function occurs, right? So you are, say you are here, you are at this point, this is your x naught. And what's the, what's the gradient of f at this point? 
what is the gradient of f at this point? Outward normal, right? Because if you go in this direction, the cost increases, right? So in steepest descent, you will come in this direction. Right, because it's exactly so. This is my gradient of f at x naught. This is my x naught. And in steepest descent, you are trying to descend along this direction. So you are reducing the cost for sure. If you if you descend along this direction, you are going to reduce the cost. But what you are doing in Newton's method or diagonally scaled steepest descent or discretized Newton and so on is you are trying to turn this vector in a direction so that you have better descent. So you will move it along this direction. Okay, so this is my gradient of f, negative gradient of f at x naught, which is used for steepest descent, and this direction will be minus dk gradient of fxk. Remember that a positive definite matrix is going to rotate the vector right and as you can see in this particular figure if you always rotate the vector so that you are pointing very close to the optimal point you will descend much faster as compared to in this case where you are pointing in some other direction okay not it's still reducing the cost, but you're not pointing in a direction that will give you the maximum benefit uh, uh, towards, I mean, in, in the sense that you will be moving towards the optimal point much faster than the other case. So that's the whole idea of using this dk, and the closer you are to the inverse of second derivative, the better, the faster your convergence would be. Now you can argue that in steepest descent, you are, you are minimizing the first order approximation of the function. In Newton's method, you are minimizing the second order approximation of the function. So why not do third order, fourth order, fifth order approximation of the function, right? And we'll have a much faster convergence rate, right? Doesn't that sound appealing? Who is going to implement that algorithm? <laughs> okay, so really it's very difficult to solve problems with higher order approximation because then you get into these tensors, higher dimensional matrices, three dimensional, four dimensional, five dimensional matrices, so nobody wants to think about it or do it. Okay, so we stick to second order approximation which is the Newton's method and then uh, using Newton's method to descend if you want faster convergence. But if your initial vector, you know, x is very high dimensional, thousand dimensional, or million dimensional, then you can't use Newton's method and so you have to stick to steepest descent. So any question on that? No questions? So we figured out the steepest descent, uh, sorry, not the steepest descent, but the descent direction. So now let's talk about alpha k. How do we choose alpha k? So the first method is minimization. Minimization rule. So my alpha k is argmin alpha greater than zero.
All of you know the symbol argmen. How many of you don't? Yeah. Right. Right. Because remember, we are doing a second order approximation of the function here. What second order approximation does is it takes into account the curvature of the function. Right? First order approximation is like a hyperplane. It's not taking care of the curvature. Second order is taking care of the curvature, so it's always going to move it in the direction which is beneficial to the descent. Okay? So it's 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 all a play of curvature of the function. Okay, so this is all of you know what argmen is? No? Okay. So when you do min of fx, uh, f, we have already used f. Let's say g of y, okay, and y is in some set capital Y. So you call this value v star, it's the minimum of the g uh, evaluated at y for all the points y in this set y, and y star is known as argmen of y in y, g of y, this implies v star equals to g of y star. Okay, so y star is the point at which the minimum was achieved. Okay, and v star is the value of the function at y star. That's what is the meaning of argmen. Okay, so same thing. So alpha is a strictly positive number and you have this xk, you are going in the direction gk. So this is your xk plus alpha k dk, this point here. And what you want to do is evaluate the function at every point here and you want to pick a value of alpha k at which o on this line the function is minimized. So you are picking alpha k such that the value of function f is minimized at xk plus alpha k dk. Okay, that's called uh, the minimization rule. And then the second option is limited minimization rule, which basically says that alpha k is argument alpha in some set 0 comma s of f x k plus alpha d k. limited minimization yes it is because see for finding the minimum value of for all alpha greater than 0 you have to find do a lot more uh, evaluation function evaluation along this line but for that you only have to evaluate it over a small interval 0 to s sorry s is some number greater than 0 you can pick it arbitrarily 
okay s could be equal to 1 it could be equal to 2 it could be equal to 5 s s oh it's not 5 okay uh, how do i write s okay let me write it this way <laughs> that, that's not eight. Uh, okay, so it's S, not eight. <laughs> okay, so the third method is Armijo rule. And the idea in Armijo rule is a bit more complicated, which is alpha k is beta raised to m k s, where beta, where m k is the minimum. natural should I write natural number no it should be whole number such that f of x k minus f of x k plus a horrible looking expression but I assure you this is very important so you pick uh, sigma 10 raised to minus 5 to 10 raised to minus 1 you pick beta in 0 1 0 1 and you pick s not 1 actually it has to be strictly less than 1 and s could be 1 2 whatever some number okay some positive number so let's talk about armio rule this is my f of x and this is my x okay and the idea behind our mirror rule is let's pick some x k okay let's say this is my x k and you figured that you want to go in this direction okay so d k is going in this direction So what should the step size be? Okay, if you so the first intuition is let's these step sizes require you to evaluate the function at various points of alpha, right? So you don't want to do that. So let's come up with an adaptive way of changing the value of alpha so that the function gets minimized. Okay. Uh, so how do you get to that position? So well define alpha k as s multiplied by beta which is between 0 and 1 raised to m k uh, raised to m okay so you start with m equals 0 and you compute the difference 
f of x k minus the new point f of x k plus beta raised to 0 s multiplied by d k. Right? So, let us say m equals 0 and f of x k and this is your f of x k plus beta raised to 0 s d k. Okay, and you want to find out the difference. This is my f of x k. Now, if this difference is greater than equal to minus sigma, sigma is some constant between 10 raised to minus 5 and 10 raised to negative 1, multiplied by beta raised to 0 s, okay, which is what you started with m equals 0 multiplied by the gradient transpose d k. So, you want to make sure that this number is larger than this value. Okay, this value is easy to easy to calculate and if that is not the case, if this is smaller, then you reduce the step size. Okay, you, so, you change m, m to m plus 1. So, you start with m equals 0 check f of x k minus f of x k plus s d k is greater than equal to whatever. If this does not hold, then you take m equals m becomes m plus 1 and then you calculate f of x k minus f of x k plus s beta d k greater than equal to negative of some value and again if this gets satisfied then you take m equals 1 and take alpha k equals beta raised to 1 s if that does not happen then you again change the value of m equals 2 and then do the same computation and so on. Okay, so, you may want to make sure that the difference in function is substantial for you to be taking that step size. So, this would be m equals 0 this would be m equals 1, this would be m equals 2 and so on. Okay? So, so, you will try to find the difference in function here and here and then you will choose whether what the value of m should be. Okay? And whenever this, whenever this condition is met, you immediately pick that value of m here and that would become your step size and then you go to the next iteration. Is that clear? Is the Hermio rule clear? You want the difference in function to be substantial, that is why you have this Hermio rule. And then there are two other simple rules. Which is constant step size which is used very widely in machine learning alpha k equals s okay it's constant typically it's equal to 1 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 right so that's constant step size and the other one is diminishing step size what this says alpha k goes to 0 but summation of alpha k goes to infinity. So, an example is alpha k equals gamma over k plus 1, gamma is some positive constant.
okay uh, the constant step size is easy to understand it's easier to implement you don't have to do any function calculation now think about it in this way suppose you wanted to use armio rule then you have to calculate f of xk you have to calculate this every time you are trying to find the value of m right and so if you're again if your x is very high dimensional and your function com computation is very costly then you don't want to use armio rule right when can the function computation be very costly you have data across multiple servers you have some objective function f that you want to minimize and then you have to get all the data from all the servers do the function computation and then send out the information to all other servers right so that's a lot of overhead you don't want to do that so therefore you don't use you use armio rule if your problem is small enough but you don't use armio rule if you your co function computation is costly or if your the data requirement for doing this computation is is very high okay so in those cases either you use constant step size or you use diminishing step size both of them are very simple to implement okay but uh, in practice people tend to like diminishing step size uh, more because it has some desirable properties it's more uh, 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 it's it's slower it's certainly slower than constant step size but you don't have jittery behavior with diminishing step size okay uh, the 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 one thing i want to comment upon is why do we need this this requirement okay uh why should the sum of alpha k be equal to infinity can someone explain that to me yeah you want to give it a shot right uh so so you are right uh, the idea is if alpha k if sum of alpha k is finite number you may not be able to explore the entire space for the minimum point okay and to give you an example let's say your summation of alpha k is equal to 5 and you are trying to optimize a function that looks something like this and goes up okay so the the slope is almost this almost constant and you start from here this is your x not and this is your x not plus 5 and let's say the gradient f of x is equal to 1 it's constant right so you are trying to move along this direction let's say it's negative 1 so you're trying to move along this direction but because your sum of alpha k is equal to 5 you will at most be able to reach this point okay and that's not useful because your optimal point lies here so you're not able to explore the entire space for finding the optimal solution so that's why you need this condition summation of alpha k equals infinity so that you can explore the entire space and this is what many people use if they have to use diminishing step size this is what many people use because it satisfies this property that alpha k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity and summation of alpha k is equal to infinity okay any question so far okay so what we will talk in the next class are convergence issues with gradient descent and also some theorems about whether this uh, class of algorithms converge or not and under what conditions they converge okay so if you have any questions let me know otherwise thank you for attending